Hello and welcome to the W204. I actually started filming this a couple of weeks before lockdown because I thought this is the car that does all the heavy lifting, all the work and the miles in this collection of cars, but it never gets a look in. So I'm going to give it a proper service, put the wheels back on for summertime, do a few other odd jobs to it, but then lockdown happened. And so all that really happened was the bit you're about to see with the service and then a couple of smaller bits. Oh, and then I recorded an intro and it didn't work, which I'll show you a clip of as well. This is a kind of a doomed video, really. So we're 30 seconds in, already we spotted a fuel leak I didn't know about. Oh yeah. Oh okay, so it runs more efficiently. It will just run a lot worse if it's, <laughs> if it's just sucking in, um, because it's on the after the air's been filtered, mm. after the air mass, then if it's just sucking in unmetered air, it uh, can overfuel. So I'm here with a W204 this morning. It's time for its service. I was going to say annual service, but because I've had 18 months since the second time I've had it serviced, it's not an annual service. The way this car works, it's got an automatic, it works out when it needs doing, and it tells you on the dashboard which service A, B, whatever it needs doing. And it's a B service today, which is oil filter, oil obviously, air filter, although the air filter was done last time, so this time we're doing a fuel filter. But why, I hear you ask, when I've got projects which are way more involved in changing the oil, have I come to a garage to have my oil changed? It's more than that. This is Stevenson's Mercedes in New Hive near Maidstone in Kent, where Mr. Stevenson is a dealer trained uh, technician who knows these cars inside and out. So he's not just changing the oil and changing the filter, he's going over the car and using years of experience and knowledge of these models to actually spot things that are wrong with it before they go wrong. So it's actually preventative maintenance taking it in here. He's spotting bushes that are about to go bad. He's spotting fluids that need to be changed. He's seeing things that are loose that need to be tightened, which because they go on all of them, he knows exactly where to look and I wouldn't at home. So for once every couple of times a year, it's worth having a car checked out. In addition to that, because Mercedes have got their rather useful Mercedes Star Service computer system, only people with access to that computer can stamp the service log. So if I ever want to sell this car in the future, even though it's probably not worth anything with the miles I've put on it, I need to have it stamped in that computer, which he can do as well. So it's a double win and I get a second set of eyes looking at the car. One dirty filter. Lovely. <laughs> Plate, which is nice. Sometimes these snap, people twist them. The type of fuel filter on this is, a, is an unusual type, more seen on the commercial of the 651 engine. Uh, but it, it's definitely right for the car, but it's just an unusual type for a variant, maybe just because it's a, an early version of, the, of this engine in this car. I stopped three different types, and that's probably the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it might not be the filter, it, some, it might just be this, this pipe. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so sometimes we can just trim it down, Yeah. as long as there's enough. Yeah, enough flex in it. So. And, and I would say there probably is in that one. So we'll take that pipe off and have a look at that. Mm. There, there used to be a little rubber flat valve, but over time uh, they used to stick. Oh the, okay. The, 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 just the dirt would build up, you can see where it's something got behind mm. it in the past <clears throat> and so then you get moisture build up in the cabin then, because there you can see where it's coming through here. yeah you know it has to come there has to be an air intake yeah for for the the heater because you can see the motor yeah and then there's a pollen filter to the other side of it just make it's important to make sure that the water drains see these ones are a bit dirty up here yeah but it's just a bit surface dirt it's just a bit mucky but not not too blocked no catches Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Just through lack of lubrication, should be what catches it. Surprising how many of those. Steve wasn't at all happy with the colour of the brake fluid in the car, so he decided we needed to really do a fluid change. And being here with all the automated equipment they've got makes it so much easier than doing a brake fluid change at home. Push, push bleed thing push push hours of hassle frankly this is much easier 
the other thing that people don't always do when they bleed the brakes on these, of course, is to bleed the clutch. Oh, really? And get additional time because it's a menu. Oh, right, yeah. It's the same fluid doing the same job. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah the same reservoir. This, this pipe off here is what goes down to the clutch master cylinder. Well, that's something I've just learned today. It's got a slightly different shape. It's just a slightly different reservoir from mm. that of a, an automatic. Yeah. Um, we'll have a look to see how close it is to the wear sensor. Can you get that light? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so in fact it's just... It's virtually touching isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, so we have discs and pads and yep. interestingly we just noticed that the rim protector off the back of the tyre is actually scuffing against the shock which is quite unusual. Something that we've seen on these I feel premature corrosion mm. is um, uh, rusty brake pipes in this area. Oh really? Uh, more offside front and near side rears on the 204s mm. than, than any others for some reason. That's funny. So. The way the water flicks off the tyres in a particular way, hasn't I it? I don't know. I wondered whether it was because you see the green coating on them, mm. maybe they, they were being bent at the wrong temperature or they were being covered in the, the in theory, the protector yeah. and then being bent <clears throat> and the bending was fracturing oh, the yeah, paint yeah. over it and then and then the, the water maybe yeah and salt and bits and pieces were getting in there. Well, that's interesting to keep an eye on. Yep. Difficult to say how long you got left on those brakes. Uh, not long I would say. No. <laughs> um, that's know, hundreds rather than thousands. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, talk struck bushes, just see them starting to Oh yeah, just starting to give a little bit of see a little bit of movement in that just by my hand at mm. the moment, driving forces. Yep, yep. Um, something else that goes sometimes are the front anti-roll bar, the rubbers, they perish. Oh yeah. But your ones seem They're nice. okay. Yeah. No movement in them. Okay, cool. But yeah, that this link here though, that's... Is yeah. it, can you change the bushes in that or is that an entire it's unit? It's a complete arm on this. Oh, complete okay. arm. Um, so. Sometimes you can get bushes. Yeah. But it's we, changing what we found be. is that because there's a ball joint on the other end, Mm. You know, you might do this one year and then one the next year, and then you can't reuse the old bush. No. So we just do straight arms all the time. Yeah. I suppose the, the cost of actually the labour of changing that bush is as much as yes. buying a new part. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not. They're not too bad to do on this. Yeah. Um, easier than the on these than a 203 because the um, anti roll bar uh, used to cross it. Oh yeah. You used to have to take the anti roll bar down, but the anti roll bar, the bolts used to go through the alley subframe, used to mm. corrode and break. Oh. <laughs> so, a lot easier yeah. to do on these ones than they are to our three. Some of these we do drain. Yeah. Some of these ones in particular we do drain because of the plastic sumps. Oh, okay. And the fear of them cracking. Oh, really? So, if I feel that it's not moving as I like it to, then we do suck them out. Uh, Steve's also just noticed that there's a slightly moist, it's mildly moist around the back of the sump, so you just want to have it. More from the, this side. Oh yeah. Uh, probably down to uh, the oh, seals yeah. around the software valve housing. Oh yeah, they're quite wet, isn't it? Yeah. That's not underneath the fuel filter you were pointing no. earlier, is it? Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it just looks more diesel-y, mm. staining oil, uh, and that is a typical symptom. Uh, what we can do is we can give that a brake cleaner off in a moment, but it doesn't look like fuel wouldn't go as black. Oh, so. okay, yes, yeah, so that's coming from somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing he's going to do in a second is bleed the clutch. So maybe that will improve my sticky, grindy, cold start um, gear changing. Fingers crossed. Is it coming through already? So this is the hydraulic clutch on this car. This one, the new one, I cannot get my finger into this gap, or as the old one, I can quite easily get a finger width into the space in the top of that. Now, so yes, of course, that's loaded. There will, it will sink a little bit, but not to the extreme not that much. of that much. No. Uh, more noticeable on automatics and a vibration and a rumble, but we do do many on, on oh, manuals right, okay. as well, yep. just for a feeling. 
um, yeah. just a vibration coming through the transmission tunnel. Uh, some people have even said that it's helped with gear change. Oh, right, okay. Uh, because the, the back of the gearbox is dropping. So it's so not, it just not going clearly into there. So this is getting six and a half litres of Mercedes-Benz Low Ash brand. What? Just know it's 229.51. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> it's the right oil for the car and it comes from Mercedes-Benz. Because I'm not convinced about that. Um, this one feels quite nice tight, that loose. Yeah, but that was getting slack and horrible. Trim it down a little bit. Yeah. So that little kind of connector pack doesn't come as part of the filter, you have to no, swap it over. No, on, on, on the type that I thought it was going to be, <laughs> it does. Oh, okay, but not on this one. Not on this one. This is the one that I thought it was going to be, with the element built into it, mm -hmm. not changeable. This is the one which is just a, a much older one. Well, simple and basic, uh, no. But, but still available on summers, mm -hmm. the other ones. And then we have the one with the... Ah, and the separate. And the oh, that's interesting. So the element comes out of the old one. Is that four quid's worth of diesel there? <laughs> you want it back? <laughs> yeah, dip it back in the tank, would you? <laughs> First fire up, fresh fuel filter, fresh uh, oil. Instantly starts that way, no cranking, no injectors yeah. like drying on fuel. Uh, I was just checking up so there's no leach around the fuel filter. Yeah. The oil filter and the fuel filter. Everything's running dry, everything's running smooth, which is good. Even checking the spare tyre, all part of the service. Now this is a problem brought to you entirely by my own creation. At some point I might go into a video about fitting LED lights to things, but I probably won't because this is a major hassle. And they went in and out a lot of times, and one of the times, one of the bulbs went sideways and went beside the holder. And Steve's having a quick look to see if he can get at the little holder to see if he can pull it out, because otherwise the next stage is going to be taking the headlamp out of the body, which is a bit of a problem on these cars is you have to take the bumper off to do it. <laughs> Aha! Right. We have... Right, so... Don't bother trying to fit basic LED side light marker bulbs into your W204 because the computer doesn't like it and the headlight likes it even less when you push the holder into the wrong place. But we're about to not have this rather irritating message any longer. That's better. And something I hadn't realised is that the B service includes a uh, battery change in the key fob. So, emergency key out, just in the back edge. Little, little touch. Ah. Oh, I didn't know that. Super. Little tap, out it comes. Just one battery. Mm. Yeah. Right, uh, earlier ones had two. Let's make sure there's no moisture getting in on that one. Mm -hmm. Clip it back together. Nice bright light. Working. Cool. Simple Keep as that. In. Right. So, step one to uh, the next part. It's now tomorrow, the sun's out, and this car, after we're sitting for a week, is absolutely filthy. This is the, um, the new daily... Oh, uh, great. Flat battery. Special jump-starting posts in the engine bay for just such an occasion. Oh, God. I must get one of those little lithium tiny ones, that'd be far more convenient. Now I've got a cupboard full of half-used products by the front door there and I was not really sure what to use but the one finish I used on the Volvo the other day is a really light cut and it gives a lovely finish which I can then wax or seal over so I thought I'd give this a quick go. It's 10 year old paint after all but Mercedes paint is very very hard so it doesn't mark easily and it does come up very nicely. Oh, 
thirsty work, but damn, that car is turning out shiny. And for fans of Furious Headgear, because I know there are legion of you, this is a Tilly hat, which is a Canadian Army hat, which is 100% UV proof and can be folded out on either side to protect you from the sun. And this is a buff neck scarf thing, which is also 100% UV proof, which is great for keeping the sun off the back of your neck when you're working outdoors. I'll link them both in the description because they're both fantastic and damn stylish too. Now I'm going to finish the exterior with this Diablo hybrid Teflon wax, which is like a really hard wearing thing for high mileage cars like this one. And I thought this was an expensive wax when I got it off a friend of mine. Then she told me what she spends on a regular wax and I thought, wow, that's quite cheap really. But it smells kind of fruity. It's a nice warm day, so it should go on well. And make this car excessively shiny. So now I should be putting this on with a little applicator pad, but I seem to have run out. So I can't run to the shops and buy any more, so I'll use a microfiber for this. You could eat your dinner off that. Now, this car is now as sparkly as a well, very, very sparkly thing which I'm happy with, and hopefully being Teflon coated, it'll be kind of rain and dirt repellent a little bit as well. But there's one thing, apart from the wheels, which haven't been changed, which I don't like about this car, and that's these plates. Now, whilst I like a dealer plate, which has got the original dealer details on a classic car, when it comes to a new car, and it's got something like Car Giant written on it, I'm a big dislike fan of that. I do not like this one bit. And more to the point, several car dealer people I know, and they've seen these plates, and, oh, Car Giant, when was it crashed? Oh, great. So that's not the kind of aura I like to project about my car is that I've bought a crashed car. It has been, you can see at the front. Um, so for that reason, I went and bought a lovely set of pressed metal plates. These are UK legal and I was all set to drive to Italy, so they are ready to drive into Europe as well. Um, I'm not driving to Italy now for very obvious reasons, um, but these things have got to go. They can go off my wall of number plates on the garage, but they're not staying on the car. Ah, goodbye car giant plate of shame. Hello shiny new metal plate. Now, I was considering going for some like, nice gel plates because I thought they would look pretty cool on a car like this. But then I kind of thought about the shape of the car and the way it's kind of like an angular sharp chiseled looking car. So I figured metal plates are gonna look a bit better than that. Now these came from ukmetalplates.co.uk and there's a link in the description below. And they turned up relatively quickly, but they would have been here quicker if it wasn't for the whole shutdown of the postal service and everything else. Well, not shutdown, but severe delays. And that fits beautifully, looks good. Those kind of pressed metal angles really suit the back of the W204 styling. I'm kind of regretting not getting one of those nice Stuttgart number plate surrounds in ahead of time, but uh, maybe that's going too far. Let's hope this goes on straight and is the right way up. Looking good. I'm just very, very sad I won't be able to use them on holiday. Driving through on a nice road trip across the summer as I was planning. Ah, when there's a curb, it's very hard to get them exactly right first time. I found this with the uh, Mondeo. These are actually the same company that supplied the metal plates for the Mondeo last year, last year, two years ago now, crikey, time flies. But yeah, these are the same manufacturer, ukmetalplates.co.uk. Now look, looking good, that looks really good. I love this kind of chunky metal angular look. It's the right font, the correct legal UK font, uh, but with it kind of pressed into the steel, it just really, just yeah, sets off nicely on an angular looking car like this. Right, these, can go on the wall with my collection of other old number plates. So these can go up here with some of the rest of them. Whoops, I can't see. GK55 ZNT, that was a really nice Alpha 156. P1 Babe, that was a plate that was on retention on a Punto convertible. The last time I hung on to that, so we've still got the original number plates that came with it. Can't see up there. Ah, oh, 
942 and NL, that was a nice Alpha 146 that got hit by a truck. Uh, the old metal plate off the uh, boot of the White Rover. Uh, somewhere up there are the plates from BMW 5 Series, which will be the subject of a video in the next week or two when I run out of other things to say, um, because that holds the honour of the worst car I've ever owned. But somewhere in this pile of stuff are its old number plates, Now we'll find our way onto the ceiling at some point soon. I'm running out of things to do, so let's screw number plates to ceilings. Why not? Now to quote Colombo, one more thing. One more thing, sir, one more thing. Um, this is not a paid for endorsement or any kind of plug, so this is just something I bought on Amazon the other day because I'm fed up with the rubbish sat nav in this car. Um, it's a phone holder, which I think is amazing. It's an inductive charging thing, check this out. It knows when you put the phone onto it, grips the phone and starts charging immediately. That is fantastic. Tap the button, you lift it out. I'm gonna film it again, because it's so cool. Drop it in the phone. It holds the phone for you, grips it, and so you've got easy access to the nav without taking your hands off the steering wheel. It just sits there and doesn't fall off. There's nowhere else really to put the phone sensibly where you can see it if it's navigating for you. All you have to do is remember to tap the button to release it before you turn the car off, otherwise your phone's trapped. This is so cool. I'll put a link in the description below. As I say, that's not a plug. They've not paid for an endorsement. I just really like it. Right, I'm gonna leave it here today with what can we what's what can be our takeaway from this video uh, sometimes it's best to listen to the experts yeah we had the car serviced by an expert in mercedes who found a couple of little problems that i wouldn't have seen it's running better than ever all dressed up and no place to go you might say maybe that's a little bit poignant and relevant in these times because we should listen to the experts not go out maybe we can then be free to go out again because i'm going stir crazy and need to go out and not be trapped at home and i need to go and drive some cars Hope you guys are all safe. Do stay safe, do stay indoors, stay well clear of anyone if you do have to go out for any reason. Essential travel only like malarkey. Be good, I'll see you soon.